So you're probably only using about half of the problem solving resources available to you, but don't worry, I'm gonna help you fix that. So stay tight. What's up guys, my name is Tyson. I'm a fourth year PhD student in chemistry at Yale University. And today I wanna to show you how you can take real life problems and make the methods that you use to solve them at least twice as efficient. Yo, real talk, this is something that's gonna to apply to every aspect of your life. And so you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. But in order to start tackling this, let's start by defining a few things. Throughout the course of the video, we're gonna be talking about the state of a system. This just refers to any measurable quantity or quality that we care about at a particular moment. For example, here the state of our system is defined by the amount of water that's in this bucket, let's say 20 liters, where the amount of water in the bucket is only affected by two things, the rate that water enters the bucket and the rate that water leaves it. So obviously, if we pop a hole in the top of our bucket and then pour water into it, then the amount of water in the bucket will increase. On the other hand, if we poke a hole in the bottom of our bucket and allow water to flow out, then you should obviously expect the amount of water in the bucket to decrease. Things get interesting, however, when we poke holes on both the top and bottom of the bucket and allow water to flow in while water is flowing out. Now what? In this case, the relative rates of increase and decrease will affect what we observe. If water enters faster than it leaves, then the bucket will fill despite the fact that there's a hole in the bottom. If water leaves faster than it enters, then the bucket will empty despite the fact that we're pouring water into it. By manipulating these rates, you can manipulate the state or the amount of water in the bucket in any way that you want. Hypothetically, you can make the most hole ridden, beat down bucket remain full forever if you pour water into it quickly enough. And so one can argue that thinking about the rates that affect the state is much more powerful than thinking about the state itself. But so what? No one cares about buckets, right? So let's use an example that's more relevant to a lot of people, acne. Let's say you have really bad acne. The state of the system is obviously the amount of acne on your face. You probably wanna fix this, but how do you? Should you wash your face more often? Should you start a treatment plan? Thinking solely about the state of the system, which is the amount of acne on your face, leaves you with no way to actually solve this issue. Solving this problem has everything to do with the rates that are involved, i.e. how quickly do you develop acne, aka the rate of increase, and how long does it take to clear, aka the rate of decrease. So it's very possible that despite the fact that you have bad acne, you don't actually develop acne very quickly, huh? Think about it, even if you have really good habits and thus develop new acne very slowly, if that acne is taking forever to clear, then over time, you're gonna get stuck with a bunch of pimples. So if you've been asking your friend with silky smooth skin for tips, if their strategies have more to do with preventing acne from developing and less to do with getting acne to clear, then it's very possible that this is why their strategy is not working for you. Conversely, you could have the most disgusting friend ever and their habits cause them to develop acne all of the time. But for whatever reason, their face is able to clear it very quickly, and so ultimately the state that you observe is a clear face, no acne. So should you drink more water or should you moisturize more often? I don't know. But the important thing is that the answer is tied to the rates, not the state itself. By the way, I'm obviously not a dermatologist, and so I have no knowledge of specific strategies that you can use to clear your acne. This is all strictly based on logic. So now that I've opened your mind to this, let's try one more example. But before we do that, if you've been finding this helpful so far, I'd appreciate it if you take a second to like the video and subscribe to this channel. All right, now let's imagine you're trying to park your car in a very crowded parking lot. Here, the state of our system is defined as the amount of cars in the parking lot. So what should your parking strategy be? Should you wait around for a spot to open up or should you circle around until you find something? Obviously, because of the theme of the video, you probably already guessed that the answer to this has to do with the rates that are involved, i.e. how quickly do spots get filled up, aka the rate of increase, and how quickly do cars leave their spots, aka the rate of decrease. So let's find examples where these rates would differ but would still lead to a full parking lot. If you're at the best takeout only restaurant in town, then it's very possible that the rate that parking spots are filled is extremely high, right? This should make sense because people are going to be coming into the restaurant at all times. However, because the restaurant is takeout only, people don't stay very long and so people also leave their spots relatively quickly. 
Whereas the parking lot is very full, the lot is very dynamic because cars are coming in and out consistently. And so now let's imagine that you're trying to park at a different restaurant. One that's not quite as popular, but is a sit down restaurant instead of a takeout. Because this restaurant is not as lit as the other restaurant, the spots fill much more slowly. However, people are gonna sit down to eat and most likely take forever. The spots never clear, and so what you ultimately observe is a full parking lot. Cool. So, how do we park? Looking at the state alone, a full parking lot, these two examples look identical. But when you look at the rates that are involved, you'll see that these two examples are actually very different. And thus, one can argue that the strategies you use to tackle them should also be very different. In the first restaurant, spots open up very quickly. And so it makes sense to, if possible, stay where you are and wait for a spot to open up there. Even though the parking lot is very full, the off rate or the rate people leave their spots is high. And so there's a high likelihood that one of the spots in your vicinity will open up very soon and you don't have to waste any gas by needlessly driving around the lot. In the second restaurant, people don't want to leave for whatever reason and so waiting around could take hours. Luckily for you though, the on rate or the rate that people park is slow and so there's a high likelihood that if a spot opens up, it'll still be there by the time you get there, even if that spot is near where you first started. And so boom, you can once again see that the rates can and will completely change the way that you look at the world around you. By the way, you may not have noticed, but you've actually been doing calculus this entire time. Surprise! A large portion of differential calculus involves taking an equation that tells you about a state and then performing an operation known as differentiation on that equation in order to get a new equation that tells you about the rates that are affecting that state. And so yeah, when will you ever use that stuff? Literally every day. As you've hopefully begun to see from this video, it's honestly like the most useful thing ever. Anyway, as usual guys, thanks for watching. If you think this video is going to help you be more efficient, a like, subscribe, share, etc. would really go a long way. Don't forget to follow me on social media. All of my handles are at the beginning and end of each of my videos. As usual, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I respond to basically everything, so do not hesitate. Also, feel free to drop down any other examples you can see this being applied to. There are literally endless applications. All right, guys. I said, I don't go to jail. I go to Yale. Multiple degrees, what that mean, woman's hell. Young black king, I'm about that thing like Lauren Hill. Yo, the swag is Will Smith, my resume like Uncle Phil, no. My style is polished, I'm fly as a pilot. I'm fresh, man, like the first year I was in college.